Hi, it's Katrina. From rare Viking rings found with a metal detector to lost stolen Aztec gold, here are nine incredible archaeological treasure discoveries. Number 9. Viking Jewelry Amateur metal detectorist and retired police officer Kath Giles, who lives on the Isle of Man between Ireland and Britain, recently made international news headlines for discovering a collection of Viking jewelry. She found the trove, which includes a gold arm ring, a large silver brooch, a silver armband, and numerous other artifacts on privately owned land last year. The objects date back to around 950 AD, making them over 1,000 years old. At the time, the Isle of Man was an important trading and economic zone. It's also famous for being a tax haven and for its Manx cat. Giles immediately knew she found something of immense historical value and possibly of huge monetary value as well. I'm so thrilled to have found artifacts that are not only so important but so beautiful, she told the Guardian. As required by law, Giles reported the fascinating find to the Isle of Man government, which declared the items to be legally considered treasure. The arm ring is a rare find, said Alison Fox, curator for archaeology at Manx National Heritage, adding gold items were not very common during the Viking Age. Silver was by far the more common metal for trading and displaying wealth. It has been estimated that gold was worth 10 times the value of silver and that this arm ring could have been the equivalent of 900 silver coins. The jewelry is now in the custody of the museum where they will be put on display for the public to enjoy. While the objects admittedly have their high cultural value, Fox says that their financial value has yet to be assessed. I wonder how much everything is worth. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. Gold Coins Beneath Theatre In a surprising turn of events, a theatre in Italy that closed down in 1997 was actually hiding a treasure trove of old Roman coins. Archaeologists working at the Crisoni Theatre in Como, Italy, north of Milan, found a jar with a handle filled with over 300 Roman Imperial-era coins and a golden bar. Expert in rare coins, aka numismatist Maria Grazia Facchinetti, said that whoever left the jar behind buried it in such a way so that they could come back and get it in case of emergency. The coins were all stacked in rolls just like you would see in the bank today, except they are thousands of years old. The owner may not have been a regular citizen, but might have been an early type of bank or deposit place. The coins date back to 474 AD and later, featuring the emperors Honorius, Valentinian III, Leon I, Antonio, and Libio Severo. Experts hesitated to place a modern-day monetary value on the coins, but the Italian media speculated that they could be worth millions. Opened in 1807, the Crisoni Theater was eventually converted into a cinema and ultimately closed in 1997. Numerous Roman artifacts have turned up at the nearby Novum Comum Forum, making this area a treasure trove of not just actual treasure, but of other archaeological artifacts. And now for number 7. But first, want to give a big thank you to Roberto Rojero and Stephen Curtis for all the love. Big shout out to you, and thanks so much for supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, welcome, and be sure to subscribe and join us. Number 7. Stolen Nazi Treasure Over 75 years ago, an SS officer wrote a diary under the alias Michaelis, in which he disclosed Nazi commander Heinrich Himmler's plan to hide hordes of stolen European treasure, including gold, jewels, priceless works of art, and more. The journal lists 11 alleged sites where valuable items were reportedly concealed, including an abandoned well that reaches 200 feet into the ground, located behind the 16th century Hochberg Palace in southwestern Poland. Here, there is reportedly billions of dollars worth of gold thought to originate from Reichsbank in the Polish town of Breslau. A map of the well's supposed location is included in the diary. Additionally, the writings claim that the Nazis murdered any witnesses, dumping their bodies in the well right after hiding the treasure. Then they allegedly sealed the entrance to the well by detonating explosives. The revealing journal was kept strictly secret after World War II ended, kept in a Masonic lodge in Kedlingberg, Germany, where the long-standing secret society counted high-ranking Nazi officers among its members. Michaelis, who controlled Nazi transport throughout southern Poland, was reportedly a member. The club handed the diary over to an organization called Celestian Bridge in 2019 as an apology for World War II. Celestian Bridge announced that it had received the journal from its German partners. 
At last update, the Polish Ministry of Culture and National Heritage had yet to confirm the journal's authenticity, but the palace that some of the treasure is supposedly hidden behind still stands, serving as a good sign that the buried gold might still be there. Number 6. Looted Aztec Gold While excavating for the construction of a new building in Mexico City some 40 years ago, a worker discovered a massive gold bar that archaeologists have traced back to the Aztecs. The valuable artifact dates back to June 30, 1520. Known as the Night of Sadness, Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés and his followers plundered the gold during an Aztec rebellion in the middle of the night while facing a food shortage. After stealing the treasure, the Med fled from Tenochtitlan. That fateful night, their vessel sank in a canal that once fed into Lake Texcoco, killing many of the Spanish soldiers and putting much of their stolen gold at the bottom of the waterway. When the construction worker discovered the gold bar back in 1981, experts suspected right off the bat that it may have been from the Night of Sadness. But they did not confirm the suspicion until early last year, when a group of researchers from Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History and the National Autonomous University of Mexico used X-rays to analyze the gold. Its composition, which turned out to be 76% gold, 21% silver, and 3% copper, matched the makeup of other gold Aztec artifacts recovered in Tenochtitlan as part of the Templo Mayor project indicating that the gold bar was indeed among the treasures that Cortés and his followers stole. It was likely cast sometime during 1519 and 1520, based on similar gold bars found near the temple. Number 5. Yamashita's Gold Sometimes, archaeologists are not tasked with discovering where rumored gold is located, but whether it even exists in the first place. This is certainly the case when it comes to a fabled hoard of gold in the Philippines, in the Igbaras district on the island of Panay, which is rumored to have been hidden by a general named Tomoyuki Yamashita amid the Japanese occupation of Southeast Asia during World War II. Inspired by old Filipino folk tales dating back even further than that, the treasure hunt seems to be based on nothing more than myths, according to anthropologists who have attempted but failed to find credible, real-life roots to the tales. Consequently, historians have concluded that the alleged gold cache simply does not exist. People are spending a lot of money and a lot of time and effort looking for stuff that is probably not there, linguistic anthropologist Pierce Kelly told Life Science. Locals are concerned because the ongoing searches are so disruptive to the environment, they have the capacity to cause landslides in the area where the hoard is rumored to be located, according to findings by the country's Mines and Geosciences Bureau. As a result, residents have asked officials to put a stop to the excavation which a group of 10 men have allegedly been carrying out for quite some time near their village. The treasure hunters defended their supposed right to dig and reportedly refused to clear out, citing permission from officials in the Philippine capital of Manila. If a landslide does occur, it stands to bury as many as nine houses that sit at the bottom of the hillside that has attracted so many fortune seekers over the years. And if you ask the people who live there, there is simply no monetary value that one can place on their homes or lives. What do you think? Is it worth it to search for the treasure? What if it's hundreds of millions of dollars? Do you think it's actually there? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Treasure in Glacier Melting glaciers are becoming more common, and they are revealing many things that have been frozen in ice for centuries. Ancient artifacts are appearing in places where the ice is disappearing, and scientists are having a hard time keeping up. Last year, archaeologists reported finding a treasure trove of hundreds of artifacts dating back to the Viking Age, Bronze Age, and Roman Iron Age on a high-altitude trail located on Norway's melting Lendbreen Glacier. Along the no longer traveled mountain pass, scientists have found the remains of a dog wearing a collar and leash, tools, clothing, shoes, a walking stick inscribed with runes, animal bones, riding gear, a knife, parts from a sled, and other surprisingly well-preserved items. Researchers detailed the findings in a study published in the journal Antiquity, describing the ice patch site as sitting between 5,500 and 6,300 feet above sea level along a trail that reaches an altitude of 6,500 feet. Carbon dating of the object shows that people used the pass between 300 and 1500 AD, possibly earlier, perhaps as early as sometime between 1750 and 500 BC. The largest number of items date back to around 1000 AD, suggesting that the trail was most heavily used around that time. Scientists spotted the first evidence of artifacts in 2011, and the discoveries continued until 2015. Before being exposed in recent years, the items long sat frozen beneath the ice, keeping them in pristine condition. 
Travelers likely abandoned many of the objects along their travels, but researchers are more confused about why perfectly useful clothing appears to have been left behind. They theorize that hypothermia may have caused people to act irrationally, thereby ditching potentially life-saving clothing. The artifacts are helping experts learn more about exactly how the trail was used and what life was like for the people who traveled along it. Number 3. High Status Anglo-Saxon Burial In 2003, archaeologists from the Museum of London Archaeology Service, or MOLAS, were commissioned to excavate a site in southeast England in anticipation of a road construction project. Led by senior archaeologist Ian Blair, the team did not expect to find much on the small parcel of land. To their surprise, they discovered an incredible royal Anglo-Saxon burial containing over 60 artifacts, including gold crosses, glass jars, drinking vessels, a copper alloy bowl, and more. It was chock full of artifacts and treasures. Dating back to 630 AD and believed to be the earliest Christian burial in England, the grave offered researchers a previously unseen glimpse into the lifestyle of high-status individuals in the country during that time period. This is extremely significant because it is so rare to find an Anglo-Saxon burial chamber, let alone one that is so well-preserved, Blair said following the discovery, adding this will open new windows on our understanding of the Dark Ages. You can draw arrows all over Europe and the Near East, tracing the origins of the grave goods. Interestingly, the body itself was missing from the burial, which deteriorated over the centuries as it lay in acidic soil. But finding the grave goods in remarkable condition was good enough for archaeologists, who were eager to better understand what life was like for English royalty 1,400 years ago. Number 2. Nero Coin a gold coin bearing the face of Nero, the emperor famous for supposedly playing the fiddle while Rome burned, was found in 2016 at the Mount Zion dig site near the old city of Jerusalem. According to archaeologists, the currency was likely minted in 56 or 57 AD, nearly a century after the Romans conquered the city in 63 BC in what's known as the Siege of Jerusalem. The coin is exceptional because this is the first time that a coin of this kind has turned up in Jerusalem in a scientific dig. Excavation co-director Shimon Gibson told CNN, adding coins of this type are usually only found in private collections, where we don't have clear evidence as to place of origin. The lettering around Nero's portrait says Nero Caesar AVG IMP, which defines his name and position. It says Caesar because many Roman rulers took either this or the title Augustus as a synonymous term for emperor. The coin's reverse side contains information that enabled experts to trace its manufacture date. Because it is gold, there is no erosion. Unlike bronze or silver coins, this one doesn't erode, University of North Carolina Charlotte professor Raphael Lewis explained while describing the artifact's remarkably preserved state. He further said the gold is also of a very high quality. We're talking about 24 carats. Based on where the coin was found, Gibson believes that the wealthy priestly caste may have lived in the large houses that were in the area during ancient times, although he does not believe Nero ever visited Jerusalem. Besides playing the fiddle, Nero, who rose to power as a teenager in 54 AD, was also known for scheming to murder his dangerous mother and even his own wife, as well as bleeding taxpayers dry so he could build palaces and have parties. His reputation was cruel, and while he may not have actually played the fiddle, the Roman historian Tacitus wrote that Nero may have even burned Rome down on purpose so he could rebuild it how he wanted. Number 1. The Great Synagogue of Vilna In 2019, archaeologists from the Israel Antiquities Authority announced the discovery of the buried Great Synagogue of Vilna in Lithuania, which contained piles of coins, colorful tiles, an inscription described as priceless, and more. Nicknamed the Jerusalem of the North, the synagogue was badly burned during World War II and subsequently razed in 1957 by Lithuanian officials. Then, a kindergarten and a primary school were built on the site. The original structure went unattended until a small excavation was carried out in 2011, followed by a more in-depth investigation in 2015. In addition to the items I just told you about, the team also found two ritual baths, or mikvahs, and parts of the two-story 18th century structure, the Torah was read from, known as the Bima. The 200 coins found at the site date back to between the 16th and 20th centuries, but to the archaeologist's surprise, they were not the synagogue's most valuable discovery. That title is claimed by an inscription, which was part of the Bima and emphasized the devotees' deep connection to the Holy Land. The discoveries are especially valuable not because of their monetary value, but in memory of the tens of thousands of Lithuanian Jews who were murdered during the Holocaust. A memorial center is planned to open up at the site by 2023. 
Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye!